Welcome to Powerboat and Rib TV. My name's Paul Glatzel, and you'll have seen me with Tom in the past looking at training um, on powerboats and ribs. We're here in Palmer today on the first visit to the Axapar 45, uh, so the new launch from Axapar at the Palmer International Boat Show. We're here on board a boat with triple 300 Verados, uh, so we're going to have a look at that later. We're going to have a look around this new offering from the Axapar brand. Um, very much their newest boat, very much now their biggest boat, um, and it looks like a really interesting offering. So let's have a look around the boat. So we're at the, the stern here, and you can see just to my right, we've got triple um, Mercury Verada color-coded 300 horsepower outboards. Um, and what a great engine. There's um, many engines nowadays we can get on uh, boats, and I know the Mercury's are particularly set up to actually work here with the Axo Pass. And we've got a big open deck area, area here um, for any sort of water sports activity crashing out during the day. Uh, so a nice big area. And what we're gonna do is have a look at the hatches, see what's underneath, see what space we have on board. So, so over here on the port side, just a large storage locker. I'd suggest that's probably pretty good for fenders, um, the various cleaning materials you're gonna have on board. And um, we've got a big fire extinguisher in there as well. So plenty of space there. And we've got the same over on the starboard side as well. So on the starboard side here, another locker, just the same, this time without the fire extinguisher, lots of lines. Gonna easily be able to get a fenders in there as well, so it makes it really good storage. So you can see now I've opened up the hatches and we've got uh, a lot of space down here. The, the main part of this is for our various systems. We've got steering pumps here for the Verados, we've got a raw water um, strainer, a bilge pump there. Um, and we've also got a battery system here on the starboard side, we've also got uh, similar on the port side. And we've got a variety of electrics under there that you can't quite see at the moment, and on the port side as well. And if we look forward behind where I am, we've got more storage, and actually that's set up um, for storage for the onboard cushions, and that runs forward underneath the rear of the cabin, just to give you that longer storage. I suspect it'll also be good for things like water skis, wakeboards, um, and the other sort of things like that we're gonna carry on board. We've got other areas of storage on boards that we'll look at in a moment on top of the cabin, um, and we've got sups up there, kayaks. So it's actually really well set up for having a fun day with the family. Here on the starboard side, we've the, the blue batteries you see there, uh, lithium batteries, um, and they're basically there to avoid the need for a generator on board. So avoiding the need for a generator on board gives us the option to be able to run without that additional noise of a generator. Um, and obviously um, it's arguably more environmentally friendly as well, which is great. Right, so we've had a quick look at the stern, we've had a look at the lockers, um, got some shots of the engine there. So let's actually just walk forward and have a look at what we see at the bow and then we'll come back and look at the cabin area. As we go forward here, good side access. It's nice and wide, probably about half a metre wide. It's easy for me to walk up and down along the side here. Um, and as we're gonna see later, we've actually got these wings that fold out. Uh, so we'll do that round on the port side in a moment. Moving forward, we've got a step here. We're gonna have a look at these doors because these doors fully open up to actually give much better access to the cabin. Um, so that's a nice feature as well. Coming forward, you can actually see the sun pad um, area here, and we've got a seating area, sun lounge sort of area, um, and then we've got the, the bow area and the bow lockers. So we've got some uh, reasonable seating around here. Um, it's not a huge amount of seating area. It's obviously great if you'd be able to uh, sit out um, and you, know, you can crash out and enjoy the sun. I've seen a few anchor lockers in my time, um, but I think it's fair to say I've not seen one like this before, um, and actually really does rather appeal to the anchor geek in me. Um, we've got a standard windless, uh, standard uh, chain in there. I'm not quite sure how much we've got, but obviously it uh, needs to be specified according to where you're gonna anchor. Uh, but what we have is a very sort of unusual uh, anchor arrangement. Um, if we look at the bow area, we can see that the anchor's not there, it's in this locker. Uh, that in itself is not unusual, but what is unusual is the way it's going to roll forward and deploy. Um, so I've freed up the chain so there's enough chain to, to do this and then if we actually watch what the anchor actually does it 
We can see it sort of pivoting over the top there. Just let it settle. And really the anchor's now back into the position that we'll see it on many other boats in this marina. Um, the advantage of having, in, having it in that locker is one, it's brilliant, a brilliant piece of kit doing that. Um, it also doesn't sit proud of the boat, so it makes the boat look more attractive. Um, and when we're in close quarter situations and marinas moving around, then not having a big piece of metalwork um, at the front can be an advantage too. Uh, it might even reduce your mooring costs, you never know. So what is also unusual on uh, this boat is the gull wing doors, very James Bondish. Um, so we've got a button here, we press the button, hold that in, pull the handle up, and you can see we're opening the gull wing doors. And we can do that with the cushions in situ. And what that opens up to is it gets brilliant flow of air through into the cabin down below, which we're gonna have a look at later. These are Again, unusual, quite heavy doors, quite solid feeling. And we can move them forward and lock them into various positions, just like really any normal sliding door like that. But one of the other features we've got um, is we can actually, there's a um, side part of the cabin here, that's a door as well. Um, and what we can do is open that up and move both doors forward together um, so they're actually sort of blocking off this part of the helm position. But what that does is open up the rear part of the cabin so that you can go through in and out through there. And if you link that up to the fact that what I'm sitting on is the side wing that's going to open up, then what you've actually suddenly done is actually open up the cabin quite materially. And you can see now, I can actually come out the rear part of the cabin. So one of the things we mentioned earlier was the, the wings uh, that are available at the side. Open up these side hatches, these side catches rather. And then we can actually push this wing down and it's sort of constrained with a line here to reduce the speed at which it goes down. And then there's a mechanism to actually make it lock into place. Um, and it basically opens up the amount of space we've got on board. There's a seating uh, facility with this, and there's a locker in here as well. So we just a really nice way of increasing the overall deck area. Getting it back up is that easy again. Bring it back up and then pressing the button there and rotating to lock the catches in. So we're now inside the cabin where personally right next to the helm position I feel very much at home um, and really nicely laid out. Um, we've got a sort of interesting setup here at the bow. We've got these three seats and as we can see just to my right here uh, we've actually rotated one. They all rotate around basically to engage with the people um, in the aft area of the cabin. Um, and what we've got here also is a cooking area uh, with all the sort of like usual fridge cooking material type stuff. And interestingly that can slide backwards and forwards like you see uh, on many boats nowadays. And we've got a U-shaped seating area with the fold out table there. You see above our head what we've got is a opportunity to actually open the roof up and create access obviously to the wonderful Mediterranean sun um, or indeed to run with it closed when it's a little less attractive. Um, if we look at the helm position um, we've got in this boat the Simrad multifunction displays um, of which we've got two um, and then a sort of separate control unit, various buttons, um, steering wheel with various controls just like we see on our cars nowadays. Um, twin throttles and we also have the joystick uh, control here for the Verado as well. Uh, so that's going to give us um, the opportunity to move this boat really backwards, sideways, forwards. It's going to give us total control over that boat um, and as we can see the usual sort of setup in terms of keys, kill cords, VHF radio there. And coming across this way we've actually got access uh, to the forward cabin area, we've got the button we press there and that just just constraining that moving up that wants to go up quite quickly and we've got a sliding door here to open up into that forward cabin that's the same forward cabin we've just seen from the wing doors that we just opened up on the side that's a big double v berth at the bow possibly a separate single berth on the side and you've obviously got the heads and the shower area as well so Nice setup, a good amount of space inside, as you would expect really on a 45 foot boat. Um, and what we're gonna do now is take the boat out and see what it runs like. We've got our twin throttle systems and we've got the uh, joystick control. Amanda's just casting the lines off forward for us. And then we're gonna move away from the dock 
Um, we're going to do that on the joystick so you can see how the joystick uh, works on this one. Um, and they're always really impressive pieces of kit. This one's also got the um, Skylock feature where we can just press it and it will hold position. So it will use GPS to actually hold position where we want it to, uh, which is a really clever little feature. Okay, good. Thank you. So we're now cast off, we're just going to move away. And what I like about this is on this system it's not using lots of revs. A lot of the time we'll actually see lots and lots of revs to achieve this objective. Okay, so what you can see is we're turning around really pretty neatly on the spot, and we're doing that here on the joystick. But frankly, uh, with the throttle system we've got, we've got a bow thruster as well. You may well decide that you actually don't want to use the joystick, that you actually just want to do it in the more sort of traditional way. And either's absolutely fine. It's just great to have all these additional tools because then there will be certain situations where you actually want to use the joystick over and above using the more sort of traditional throttle method um, and the bow thruster. And equally, there will be other times where that would be the preferred method. So we're now out to sea away from the marina and we're going to get the boat uh, running a little bit faster and see what it performs like. Um, so actually what you can see here, I'm just like looking around um, the cabin and the very um, good visibility the whole way around. There's only a very small blind spot there um, at the aft areas, but there's glass the whole way around. That's really unusual um, for a boat to have such good visibility. There's sort of millions, the, the joints between the glass here are absolutely tiny. Um, it's not to say you couldn't miss something, but it's uh, very good visibility on this boat. So you can see here at the helm position, we've got the standard throttles and then we've got the joystick control. You see the green lights that's showing that's in neutral and the joystick um, is not being used. We don't actually need to take control uh, from either position. We can just literally go into gear on the throttles and that takes the joystick um, away from being able to be used. Or we go to neutral, the green light comes back on the joystick and then we're in a position to use that. You can see the sim rounds in front of us. We set those up with chart on one side, engine data uh, on the other. And like any multifunction display now, um, getting feeds from the engine, we can display really whatever data we want, including the radar, music system, etc., etc. So we're just increasing our speed. So we're going to move forward. Um, and you might be trading up to this boat from another AXA par um, or any other smaller boat, or potentially it could even be your first boat. Um, one of the things you always got to look out for, and it's a very busy area, it doesn't look too busy this morning here in the Bay of Palma, uh, but there's always the potential for swimmers, um, fishermen, um, objects in the water that could do damage to the outboards. So it's really key, we keep really good visibility ahead of us. Um, the positioning of the multifunction displays is good, it means um, any crew I've got, my family could actually be assisting me by looking at stuff in terms of where we're going, but I can keep my eyes up out the front of the boat. Um, and I'm keeping my hand on the throttles, and just moving it forward, my technique tends to be to just shuffle each side forward a millimetre or two and to bring it up really steadily. Because the worst thing we could do would be just to floor the throttles. It's a huge amount of power on the stern there at 900 horsepower. And everybody on board gets thrown back and doesn't enjoy their experience as much. So we're going to accelerate forward. And it really does pick up very nicely, as really 900 horsepower should. And as pulled up, we haven't had any material lift from the bow. It's just come up onto the plane really nicely. And being on the plane, we're now sliding across the surface of the water. We've got a speed of 26, 27 knots at the moment. And the boat feels really stable. Just going to carry on increasing the speed a bit. A little bit of chop out here in Bay of Palmer, um, but the boat's dealing with it absolutely fine.
unusual here is the trim control is actually on my steering wheel. Um, so that's you know a new development now in terms of boats. And I suppose it's just similar to all the cars we have, isn't it? You can control loads of stuff now from um, an all you know sort of a clever and intelligent uh, steering system. We got the active trim system on the engines for fore aft trim, and we also got the trim tabs that can give us some side to side trim to deal with any leveling issues we have. So we're good to go in terms of getting the boat up onto the plane. So just accelerating uh, forward now, and I do that by sort of like shuffling um, the two throttles just a millimetre or two forward on each side. Uh, the danger I tend to find is if I try to push it forward as one, I tend to sometimes put too much power on. And then I can get to a point and I can actually put my, the palm of my hand on the throttle unit, and that just gives me fine control. Uh, so we're up to already, um, up to 16 knots and it doesn't even feel like we're moving at the moment. We come up onto the plane, it's onto the surface of the water and I'm just slowly pushing that power on. And I think the key thing there is not to absolutely floor it because that's when you throw children, adults, bits of kit around the, uh, around the cabin. And keep really good lookout because whilst you might think you're in a fast boat, there's always a faster boat. Um, and if that fast boat is coming up behind you and you turn one way or the other, then if you turn into them and they're overtaking you, then uh, you're immediately uh, breaching the cold range. So we're accelerating forward, we're up to about 25 knots now, and it's a really very seamless progression. Uh, we're not having any lift of the bow, it's just lovely movement. So we're now down about 30 knots, and we're just pushing the throttles forward again. Good, good look out all around. Really does accelerate very nicely. Up to about 37, 38 knots now. So just playing with the trim there, just levelling up side to side trim. You know, it's just keeping one hand throttle, one hand steering the whole time. You know, very reliable engine steering system, but if something went by having my hand on the throttle, I'll be able to get the power off straight away. Up to about 40 knots, it's a bit of a, a little bit of a chop here in the bay, so we're starting to bounce around a bit. Plenty of handholds in good places, which is always good. And in the helm position here, with the seat partially folded up, I'm able to push back and brace against the seat. Um, about 45 knots now. And that's actually throttles fully forward and we're sort of accelerating still, about 45-ish uh, knots. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a turn into port to the left-hand side. And what we shouldn't do is be putting a fast, tight turn in. Um, the danger is then, uh, on any boat, uh, however good any hull is, you're just increasing the risk of throwing passengers around. So we've eased off a little bit, and we go into a nice wide turn, keeping a really good look out to our left hand, our port side, just in case there's anything over on that side. And it's really running nicely around the turn, very level. The boat's not skipping out at all. running pretty much completely into the wind by the looks of it so the little shot we've got we're taking on the nose and it's running really nicely through that. Now we're just going to put some turns into the left and to the right again communicating to our crew so when we're going faster in a boat things come towards us much quicker and there's the danger of things getting in the way so we need to be scanning forward picking things up from some distance out probably a two miles off to my port at about my 10 o'clock was a tug or something similar to that so picking stuff up at that sort of distance there's another boat maybe at anchor approximately 20 degrees round to um, towards the bow so again picking up on these sort of things and it's those small fast boats um, that could come into our area and catch us out so what we must have become is fixated on our electronics but looking down I could be really fixated on my chart plotter, uh, but that's not, not helpful because the risk, the dangers are out the front of the boat. So we're coming into the marina here. Uh, we decided that we're going to go on to the dock on the right hand side. And the way my brain's working at the moment is what's the wind doing? What's the tide doing? We don't have much tide here in the med. We do have a little bit actually, and that catches people out. Uh, but particularly, what's the wind doing? Um, 
and there's a little bit of wind offshore but we're in close to the marina so it's potentially all a bit confused the wind um, so I've gone to neutral I'm just cruising in slowly we've got plenty of time Amanda will sort all the fenders out and the lines out but equally if we're not sorted that's not a problem I'll just back away um, and then we'll go again that's no problem whatsoever and we're actually sort of drifting in one of the slight challenges about being in a cabin is you can't feel the wind so you don't know where it's coming from and if anything it seems to be coming maybe slightly from my right hand side but again we're quite close to these buildings so it's likely to be quite confused but that's where actually things like the joystick come into it um, I've got a bow thruster here as well which I switch on and coming in it always makes real sense for me to, to just test my bow thruster And I'm just into gear, out of gear. The wind feels firmly like it's up my backside. So it may well be I'll transfer to the joystick at the last moment just to keep it alongside, or we'll just take a view. And you can see I'm just into gear, out of gear on the individual engines. Just use that bow thruster for just really what a bow thruster is designed for is you hear them lots in the marinas being used lots but it should just be it's that sort of get out of jail free card it's just tidying up the bow as it actually needs to and Amanda's gone to the stern there we we'll just pull the bum in and everything's nice and gentle nice and relaxed so Amanda's got a midships line on, she's got a stern line on, and then we can actually tidy up the bow in a moment. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick look over an Axle Par 45. Do check out Palbo and Rib TV, check out our Facebook, check out our Twitter. Like, share, comment on what we've actually done, and we'll be back soon with other tests.